Howdy, this is Lemmy with RevZilla, here to talk to you today about how to buy frame sliders for your motorcycle. You should be looking into a set of frame sliders for your bike if you're looking to protect it. We're gonna have stuff that's really made for bikes across the board. Everything's gonna be reasonably application specific though, so throw your bike into our bike finder, we're gonna show you the stuff that fits your bike precisely. Installation on these really does vary just a bit. I'm gonna say for most of you, you're gonna be somewhere between the one and two beards on our BSD, our beard scale of difficulty. Really the style of bike you have as well as the style of slider you buy is gonna have an awful lot to do with how difficult your installation's gonna be. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So before we get into some of the products you can see here, let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of a crash slider and the anatomy of a crash. So as crash sliders sort of evolved, they originally started as racers tried to find a way to keep their frames from being ground away to nothing when their bikes hit the deck and slid down the track. However, as things evolved, I think there were street riders who saw it and either liked the style or also liked the possibility of protecting other parts of their bike besides the frame. So one of the things you want to think about when you're purchasing a set of crash sliders is the length of the slider. Generally speaking, a shorter slider is going to be better for high speed scenarios and a longer slider is going to be better for helping you out in those driveway tip over, perhaps parking lot situations. And I'll explain why in just a moment. We've got, to anal uh, you know, we've got to analyze how a crash actually happens. First the bike goes down, then the bike slides across the pavement. The reason this is important is because there's really two stages to this. You've got that initial impact that needs to be absorbed, and then you've also got the bike sliding down. We need to keep the bike elevated up off the pavement. The reason that the length actually matters there is because in a high speed scenario, like a track crash, the bike has a natural tendency to want to flip over when it snags something that's taller. A taller slider is gonna give you a little bit more leverage, unfortunately. So that means the bike is gonna be more prone to flipping over or barrel rolling. And that's the stuff that makes crashes expensive. For those of you, however, who are riding on the street and don't typically hit those big long, you know, those big speeds that the guys on the track are hitting, longer sliders can actually be to your benefit. You may not wind up having all the high speed protection in the world. However, if you just drop your bike over or tip it or you know, a buddy bumps into your bike, that longer slider may help protect some of your engine covers as well as plastics. Things that frame sliders weren't initially designed to do, but designers realize that people do look for in today's sliders. So keep all of that in mind when you're purchasing things. One of the other things you want to keep in mind is actually how you're going to install these. There's two flavors of most sliders. There's cut kits and then there's no cut kits, and the names are pretty self-explanatory. With a cut kit, you're actually going to have to put a hole into your plastic in order to mount up your slider. With a no-cut kit, however, usually there's some sort of a bracket like you can see here that's gonna sort of weasel that slider around something that's in the way, most typically a piece of bodywork or a fairing. So some of you are probably gonna be saying, well, that sounds easy, why don't I just get a set of the no-cuts? That sounds way simpler. It is simpler in terms of installation. However, because that mount is now cantilevered a little bit, you get a little reduction in the actual amount of impact protection you're going to get. So when that bike initially slams down into the, uh, the roadway, you may find that these things can actually bend to the point where they're doing a little bit of damage themselves. So you really do have to balance your installation ease with how, you know, how, how brutal you think your crashes might be. Just keep that in the back of your mind when you are shopping for some of these for your bike. So the stuff you can see up here is sort of our collection of best of. Some of the stuff uh, folks at RevZilla really like, some of the stuff that our customers have fallen in love with over the years. Let's kind of parse out each one of these and why they're the standout in their category. So let's start all the way down here at the end. You can see we have a set of Shogun frame sliders. Shoguns are a great entry level option. This is pretty much your basic frame slider. Um, you're gonna notice here just plain cylindrical Delrin. These babies are made uh, to, to hit the deck, slide, and keep your bike safe. This is a very good entry entry level option. For those of you who don't necessarily know, know what to grab, a set of Shoguns is fantastic. I usually recommend these to folks who are out there rocking it on the street because they tend to be, as you can see, a little bit longer. These are going to help you out, again, with that low speed sort of protection. If you drop your bike in your driveway, it's very possible a Shogun slider might save you some expensive paintwork or perhaps replacing some plastics. Moving on down the line here, you can see we have a set of SW Motec frame sliders. So I really dig these for a couple of reasons. First, they have these nicely machined aluminum bases. These are really rock solid pieces. And you can see here the replaceable slider 
bolts right down to these. The reason I like these so much is that they're different looking. It's not just a cylindrical slider like you see hanging off of every single motorcycle. I think early on sliders were made round because guys could chuck a piece of material up in the lathe, turn out a nice round slider and it was set to go. However, nobody really thought about the styling aspect of it. And as things have progressed, you'll see sport bikes now are typically very angular and the SW Motec pieces blend in really well with them. As far as I'm concerned though, the SW Motecs are an absolute standout because these guys concentrate really heavily on naked bikes. So if you're rocking a naked bike, be sure to check out SW Motec. They likely will make something for your bike if some of the other manufacturers do not. Moving on down the line here, you can see we have a set of RNG sliders. Again, a very solid basic option here. One of the things I want to draw your attention to, if you are looking for a basic slider, this is the way to go. But if you want something a little bit shorter than the Shogun, RNG is going to be a good bet for you. So for the more track oriented rider who is again looking for that standard cylindrical look, RNG is a big winner. One of the reasons I personally think RNG stands out is these guys have fitment that comes back pretty far. So if you're rocking an older bike, maybe your track bike's a bit of a beater, you didn't spend a whole bunch of money on it, RNG might have something where one of the other companies might not have something specifically for you. Moving on next, you can see here we have a set of Pooj Pro frame sliders. So Pooj offers two different sliders, the R12 as well as the Pooj Pro. You can see the Pro is what we've got up in front of us here. The Pro to me is a standout for a couple of reasons. Firstly, look at how large this puppy is. Lots and lots of sliding surface here. And again, they stick pretty tight to the bike. So you're getting lots of surface to grind away without necessarily reducing how far that bike is sitting off the ground. One of the other things I like here too, you can see this soft rubber piece back here. These are replaceable. This is to my knowledge, the only crash slider that's also trying to help protect the rider in a crash scenario, as well as the motorcycle. These rubber pieces are made to help uh, keep the rider from being injured. Again, they do detach. These are geared specifically to keeping you safe on your motorcycle. One of the other things too, I like about the Pooj Pro, and I think a lot of you are gonna be interested in too, these are exclusively no cut. So you are not going to be cutting up your fairings. Again, for those of you guys who wanna put a set of these on your bike, but rock your OEM fairings, which can be super pricey, uh, a set of Pooj Pros might be the way to go. Moving down the line, you can see we have a set of Woodcraft frame sliders. So Woodcraft has a couple of innovative features I think make them a standout in their category. First and foremost, check out how the actual replaceable pucks mount here. These pucks mount from the side, not from the outside in. They're, they're, they're mounting from the side here. What that means is, especially for those of you guys who are rocking bikes with plastic, sometimes you can replace a slider without pulling the plastic. It allows for an easy install. Sometimes you can sneak a replacement slider on there without having to disassemble the entire bike. That can be kind of nice. One of the other reasons Woodcraft stands out to me is because they offer some choices as far as replacement pucks are concerned. And then when I say that they offer some choices, you have a choice first in material. Plastic puck, what we're looking at here is actually a billet aluminum puck. So for those of you who kind of want that bling factor, a Woodcraft might be a good option because you can get it. They offer these in several anodized colors. They look great. The other thing though that I like about these two is check out the height difference. They offer these in different lengths. So if you decide that you want to change up exactly what it is you're doing, maybe you're converting your street bike to a track bike or perhaps vice versa. Perhaps you're saying, hey, I'm going to put my track bike back together, run it on the street, let it live a little, uh, a little bit more easily in its retirement. Woodcraft is going to allow you to tailor your sliders to whatever job it is you're, you're going to have your motorcycle do. Rounding things out, we can see here, this is definitely the last thing on the table, definitely not the, the least Litec frame sliders. These things are super nifty. Lots of cool construction, uh, you know, just little nuggets and baubles in here. Firstly, the bases are magnesium. I love magnesium. It's the lightest structural metal. So they're thinking, uh, you know, first and foremost about weight savings. I know a lot of you guys are spending big money to keep your track bikes on a diet, and these are the way to do it. The other thing I really dig though is in here, this elastomer ring, TPE. What these do is help absorb some of the impact of the crash. We talked earlier about how, you know, sometimes when those bikes come down onto the pavement, it can be fairly violent. This ring in here helps eat up some of that impact. TPE has the properties of both plastic and rubber. So what this is gonna do is help in the initial impact when your bike actually does hit the deck, but it's also going to help you too when the bike starts sliding because you do have that traditional puck material on there. 
So when it comes to installation of these, you guys are probably thinking, well, I don't know, how hard is it gonna be on my bike? Really does depend what kind of bike you have. So I'm gonna say in order from most difficult to least difficult, you've got your, your, your plastic bike uh, with OEM fairings. A little bit easier than that is gonna be, generally speaking, the plastic bike with track fairings. And then most easy is typically, again, your naked motorcycle. So depending on what you're riding, it should give you an idea of how much work you have in front of you. But the big determinant, I think, for a lot of you is gonna be whether you uh, elect to purchase a cut kit or a no cut kit. Obviously that's only gonna matter for those of you with plastics on your motorcycle. So for the no cut kits, you may wind up, again, having to remove your fairings in order to install these. Um, regardless, it's gonna be a one shot deal and most of you I think are gonna be able to install a no cut kit without having to remove your plastics. Those of you looking into cut kits, you're gonna get, again, that benefit of a little bit you know, more rock solid attachment to the motorcycle but at the expense of a little bit more work. Nothing too difficult there. Most of you are gonna wind up using some sort of a template or diagram in order to drill holes through your plastic. Um, it can be usually a pretty simple affair. As long as you have a very fine tooth hole saw and some painter's tape, take things slow, you can really get a professional looking installation with a pretty minimal amount of investment in terms of both tools and time. It's not too difficult. Generations of guys have been doing this when they head into the track. I think that it shouldn't be difficult for most of you. And if it is, have a buddy who's done it before help out out. It really isn't that big a deal. I think we've got a lot of great options up here. These are some of my favorites from some of the frame sliders we've covered, but don't take my word for it. Click that info button, see what some of your fellow track rats or perhaps street riders are saying about some of the frame sliders we've got up here. If you've got a fitment or an install question, don't be shy. Get in touch with one of our gear geeks, 877-792-9455, or you can always drop us an email, cs at revzilla.com. I'm Lemmy, I'm out of here.